This is John Kirby back with the Bear Trap Discord podcast. Um, just had my morning coffee. Uh, figured that I'd do another bit of a fundamentals video since we only really have one, the ski one, which you know, I recommend everybody take a look at. Um, before I really get into it, I wanted to mention that we have a new uh, YouTube channel. Um, and obviously the links uh, are in the descriptions of all the of all the um, podcasts, like whether you're on Spotify or wherever you are. Um, but yeah, that's probably the best way to watch your videos, the easiest way. I know a lot of people had trouble with the sort of Spotify video feed, um, understandably, right? Because it's a podcast player, but, um, or rather, you know, music. But yeah, um, yeah, I'd recommend that you follow that channel. Also, the links are in the Discord too. Uh, in any case, yeah, this is going to be an intro video on uh, DEX or uh, Delta hedging exposure. Um, and it's honestly, it's a little bit simpler than the SKU stuff. I think it can be a little confusing to read uh, if you're used to reading GEX. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to go into it. So the, the first thing um, that I will always start with, honestly, is SPY open interest, right? Which is just going to tell us, you know, how many our options are on each of these strikes, right? And then... The way I think about GEX, DEX, VEX, whatever, we'll get into that eventually, is that these are just different ways of seeing how these different options will behave given different types of changes in the environment, right? Whether there's a change in spot price, whether there's a change in IV, whether there's um, a change in, let's say, volume at that strike, um, all those different sorts of things, right? Um, and I mean, you guys should know this from just understanding how like option pricing works, right? Like you'll have, uh, like obviously your, your Vega is gonna be your uh, implied vol sensitivity. Um, your uh, Delta is just gonna be the, you know, right, the sensitivity of that option itself with re respect to a move in underlying price. We know that Gamma is a sensitivity of Delta with respect to a move in the underlying price, et cetera, et cetera, right? These are all different sorts of partial derivatives to keep in mind. One thing I would do if you guys haven't done already is go take a look at what a delta curve for a single option looks like, or a gamma curve or a vega curve for a single option looks like. Um, you can do this in Thinkorswim. Um, I'm sure there are other services out there that do this. Uh, and Or you can honestly just Google image search it. You know what, I'll just do it right now um, so we can take a look at it. Um, and then we'll look, here we go, Google images. And then uh, it should be, shouldn't be gamma exposure, should just be gamma curve. There we go. Um, gamma value, yep. So gamma curve is going to look something like this, right? So in the sense that, you know, or actually here, this is nice too, right? The at the money option is going to have the highest gamma as you go further out of the money. Oh, this is the one that I like the most. Just took me a little bit to find it. Yeah, as you go further out of the money, um, that has diminishing gamma. It's like, why? It's because, well, clearly, right, if your option is at the money, if it's at the very inflection point, that's where the delta is going to be changing the most, right? If you take a 50 delta option, that could turn into a 60, 70 delta in a blink of an eye. Whereas if you take a 30 delta option or a 20, or it's clear with a 10 delta, it's going to take a long while for that 10 delta to turn into a 50 delta or something like that. So that highest delta sensitivity, you could say, right, is at the money. So that's going to be your gamma curve. Um, and then, yeah, so I would just spend some time, I'm not going to really go into this, but you know, I would spend like, this is pretty good too. I'd spend some time just Googling these curves and just like drilling these things into your head. Right. Because, um, all we're doing when we look at these charts, right. From the bear trap, um, is we are, uh, visualizing each of these different derivatives. And then if you understand what these curves are, uh, you can actually say, for instance, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but like, like keep this in mind, right? This is your delta curve, right, of a call, right? Um, so now you look at this really big strike right here, a delta hedging exposure strike. You can think about what's going to happen if we get there, right? If we get there, then the curve of these particular set of options, it's going to be literally right here. And so it's going to be at that inflection point where all of a sudden the deltas could go up a ton, right? or they could go down a ton depending on where we are. So that's why um, these you know, delta hedging strikes are inflection points in a similar way, but slightly different, right, to the gamma hedging strikes, or sorry, to the, to the uh, gamma exposure strikes, right? Um, so I should say it like that, right? 
a delta exposure strike is going to behave in the same way as this chart indicates, right? Um, that's why when we're right on it, it's an inflection point. Um, and then uh, in with the gamma uh, curve, let's go back to the gamma curve, right? You can kind of visualize that as well. It's basically that's maximum gamma when we're right there. Of course it's maximum gamma because that's the point at which the delta stands to uh, gain or lose the most. So to, to take this to, like, let's go back to a more familiar GEX chart, right? Um, if you're looking at this, for instance, this is actually for today, yeah, March 1st, it's uh, whatever, we're an hour and a half before the open. We're looking at 399 here. Um, 399, let's say that that's a really important call gamma strike. I mean, it is, but whatever. Um, if we're right there, you can kind of visualize what that curve is going to look like in terms of the gamma, right? Like it's over, I'm trying to trace it out with my cursor here, right? It's kind of like a bell curve with the top right here um, going in either direction. So um, if we run above the 399s or we're too far below the 399s, what's going to happen, right, is that the gamma of the 399s are going to go away. So whether we're above or below here, gamma at this strike is going to be diminishing. Um, which means from an options buyer perspective, right, you're, you're not getting the best bang for your buck anymore um, if we deviate away from this 399, so to speak. Um, deviate too far, I guess. Um, speaking of which, I'd never really buy that if I were playing for a big up move or a big down move. You're never getting the best bang for your buck by buying an at-the-money option if you're playing for a significant move. Um, okay, in any case, uh, let's move from, you know, the GEX, Oh, there's one more point that I want to make, actually, which is that the issue is, right, you might have this gamma curve in your head, for instance, um, but now realize that there is one, two, three, four, five, whatever, tons of different strikes on here. So you have to overlay every single gamma curve on top of every other one. And that gets you to this sort of smoothed over the curves that we usually see, right? Um, I mean, they're not necessarily explicitly on these charts, um, but that's kind of what I see when I look at them. I'm like, I see how like um, how basically pressure on option sellers is going to increase or diminish depending on where, where we are, right? Okay, um, so we got that. Let's go back to the delta curve to get you know that in everybody's heads before we actually go to um, we go to the decks. Okay, so we have something like this, right? For a put, it's going to look kind of the opposite. Um, not kind of, you know, exactly the opposite. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so now let's look at SPY uh, net delta hedging exposure. And again, today I'm not really focused on, hey, you know, predicting what the hell is going to happen, right? I'm more focused on just you know, how do we read this sort of stuff. Um, so, uh, all right, let me take a bit of a coffee break here. Okay, so... What do we have here? Uh, what strike is this? It's kind of hard to see because I actually have my mic right in front of my screen. Um, 401. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of weird that it's... Oh, I know. Yeah, it's 401. Okay, so biggest strike is 401. Let's just focus on this one first. Um, we know that um, these are actually... Um, like, so the way... <laughs> this, is, this, is, this varies service to service, but at least the way that we calculate this um, means that, um, right, uh, there are negative deltas here. So another way of thinking about it is, hey, there's in-the-money puts at 401, right? Um, and in-the-money calls down here. Uh, so that's, a, that's something that trips a lot of people up, I think. Um, it's a little clearer if instead of looking at the net decks, you just look at the normal decks, and then you can see, oh, okay, this is really simple, right? It's just like, uh, literally put OI times delta on this side, call OI times delta on this side. And so you can see, oh, okay, at this 401 strike or whatever, 400, I'm not sure, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the puts are by far outweighing the calls. And so that's why when we go over the net decks, right, we see this big, big line over here. So in terms of the delta hedging curve, right, what's going to happen is um, as we move down, and I'm for now, I'm only focusing on this really big strike here. As we move down, right, according to the delta curve, um, the deltas of these uh, of these 401 puts are going to increase, but they're going to increase at a diminishing rate. So it's going to kind of give us a passive flow 
uh, encouraging, incentivizing us to move to the downside, but that incentive is going to diminish the further down we go. Uh, the same can we be said about these, uh, whatever these are, 397 calls, let's say, 396 calls, um, 397s, I think, um, right? Uh, if we go up, these are going to provide passive flows to the upside at an ever diminishing rate. Now, there's another thing to talk about, which is we also know from looking at our delta curve, right, that when an option is at the money, that is sort of the inflection curve point, right, where it's no longer a diminishing rate, it's an increasing rate, or it's a, it, I mean, it's going to go from a diminishing to an increasing rate. Um, so the issue, or I'm going to stick with the net decks here. The issue is, right, imagine that instead of going down, right, we actually pop up and then all of a sudden we're teetering precisely around this 401 strike. Um, then it's actually the case that, especially if we're nearing it, um, then the delta effect of these options uh, are actually going to, uh, right, like because they're at the money, think about this also in terms of gamma, right, that is the inflection point. Um, let's say that we pop just above, all of a sudden these things are going to start to decay really, really quickly. In other words, the delta effect of these options, of these puts, is going to uh, start to diminish very, very quickly. Um, so you can really look, see that if these in, in the money options, right, if we cross over them, what's going to end up happening is that um, we're actually going to end up squeezing up because the hedging obligation of all these options is going to turn to dust really, really quickly. So um, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that this makes as much sense as possible because I know that you know it's always a lot of terminology and and there's uh, it kind of flips back and forth a lot right uh, there are all these sorts of um, uh, but really simply if we stay under here then these puts are going to push us down at an at a diminishing rate if we actually start to come up um, then these puts are going to bring us up. Um, at a diminishing rate until we hit the strike, and then once we pass the strike at an increasing rate, right? In other words, you know that to the upside, this 401 strike is an inflection point. If we pass it and we hold above it, we're gonna rock it up. Similarly, to the downside, right? Uh, whatever this strike is, the 397, is likely an inflection point to the downside. Um, so long as we stay above it, there are passive deltas at a diminishing rate, um, that are going to be pushing us up. If we pop below it, then for at least a little while, right, for, and then we can look at the delta curve again, like let's say from the at the money to like, you know, maybe right here-ish, thinking about the calls now, right, because this is the call uh, delta hedging curve. So from here to like, let's say right here or something like that, um, those calls will actually flip from um, giving us passive deltas to the upside to giving us what I would even call active deltas, or, I mean, that's kind of just a term I made up, but like they're coming in hot basically, right? Active deltas to the downside. Um, now, of course, as you can see from the delta hedging curve, that's not gonna go on forever. It's only gonna go on until around there, right? And then they're gonna start to give us those things at a diminishing rate again. Um, so most decks like, in general, price action, right, on a day-to-day -day basis in the indices overall, it's just, a, we just move between pivots. And the reason that we move between pivots is because we have inflection points. Pivots are inflection points, whatever. Um, and so as soon as you get above something, all of a sudden, something that was suppressing you starts to push you the other way. And then you ramp up. And then when you get to the next one, the effect of that thing that you just overcame diminishes. Uh, and then you need to pass the next boundary, so to speak, to get another leg of fuel up, right? And we all know this from watching price action, from watching support and resistance, whatever, but it's these hedging dynamics that really drive it, right? At least nowadays. I'm sure that, you know, in the past it was a completely different set of factors, but now it's this and whatever, right? you know, you, you got you to move, you got to stay with the times, right? Um, all right, let me see if there's anything really left. Um, yeah, so, okay, once we have an understanding of that, right, um, this, these, this chart, sort of on a more practical level, can really serve to give you your boundary conditions for the day, right? So, for instance, from here, we would predict that the range of the day might be between 401 and 397. That seems like a pretty 
um, reasonable range. Uh, it's about a 1% range for the day. And, uh, you know, if either of those sides are breached, it would make sense to uh, get long or short, respectively, right? And then play for a move into another distribution. Um, it's honestly that simple. But I want to stress over and over again, we need to understand why the options do this, right? Don't just look at these charts and be like, oh, okay, I'm going to use this like this because, you know, John Kirby said so. If you do that, um, and, you know, this is something I'd, I'd refer everybody to, whatever that book is, uh, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Uh, if you do that, it's essentially the same as taking a tip, right? You're entering into a position on the basis of somebody else's advice um, or what you construe to be somebody else's advice without a clear insight as to why you're doing it. And so when it comes time to exit that position, and I'm sorry if this sounds pedantic, but I know that there's a whole range of different people that are listening to these things. Um, when it comes time to exit that position, you won't know why, right? You won't know if the indication has changed or not. And another thing to mention is obviously these delta hedging charts have to have to do with OI, right? Which is updating, it's changing intraday. So do you know what the delta hedging chart is going to look like intraday just because it'll update in the feed or because you're pulling it over and over again? No, because you don't know how many contracts they're adding or subtracting or whatever. This is something that gives you a sense for what the day is going to do at the beginning of the day, right? Um, and it often gives you a really good sense. I've been like seeing people be very successful using these. Um, but you have to know what the limitations of your indicators are and you have to know why your indicators behave the way that they do. Uh, yeah, in any case, um, I went through these examples using one strike, right? One, str one put strike over here, um, or predominantly put strike, right? And then one predominantly call strike over here. Um, uh, as in another sort of overall uh, bird's eye type of factor to take into consideration, um, gamma is going to be higher, right, for options that are just a little bit out of the money. Whereas these, a lot of times these uh, decks and charts will tell you what's going on with the in the money options. Um, so it's nice to combine the two to get a, to get a, to be able to properly visualize, you know, what the inflection points are in terms of in the money stuff, uh, and then use the GEX for the out of the money stuff. Of course, keep in mind, they're indicating very different things, right? Because of, because they're different types of derivatives. Um, both with, with respect to underlying price, but obviously the gamma is, the, is um, yes, it's a, right, a derivative of the delta, right? So um, uh, it just so happens that these are very helpful for visualizing uh, out of the money-ish or near the money stuff versus in the money stuff respectively. Um, and that's just because of how the math works out. In any case, if you want to read one of these, uh, yes, you can look at the biggest strike. Try to see if you can visualize the delta curve and then sort of map it onto all these strikes. Um, and then you'll have a really a much better idea of what hedging responses are likely to be if we start to approach or pass any one of these strikes. Anyhow, I think that'll do it for today. Uh, this was actually kind of fun. I hope you guys appreciate it. If you have questions, please ask. Um, feedback, requests for other episodes. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, like I said, uh, get on the YouTube channel. Uh, that'd be great. Like, subscribe, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, we're trying to get these out uh, as much as possible. Uh, it's, life gets in the way sometimes. Um, that's why, you know, this is a fundamentals episode again. But I think I think that these are really uh, these are fun to do. And I think I think they've been helpful to people, I hope. So, yeah. Anyhow, see you in the next one. Um, peace.